everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. As many of you guys know, Amazon Studios and Sony Pictures Television are currently adapting and filming the upcoming Wheel of Time television show. We've done many videos on the topic here on the channel in addition to the many Wheel of Time lore videos I've got. One of the things that all of us are hoping is that the Wheel of Time gets a faithful adaptation that resonates with current fans of the series but also introduces millions of new fans into the Wheel of Time. In fact, that's exactly what happened with the Song of Ice and Fire with the adaptation of Game of Thrones. And now that Game of Thrones is over, HBO is already in production in a Game of Thrones sequel set in the Game of Thrones universe. There were actually four of those prequels that they had considered or were still considering to put into production. Now, I for one believe that the Wheel of Time could be as successful as Game of Thrones. And this got me thinking, if the Wheel of Time does reach that level of success and Amazon wants to expand the universe outside of the original novels, what would be some successful stories that they could adapt within the Wheel of Time universe? In today's video, we'll be taking a look at the most likely stories Amazon could tell if they chose to make more series based around the Wheel of Time. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is one of the world's largest online learning communities. If you wanna learn how to edit video, to cook, or even to make a YouTube channel, uh, Skillshare has classes for you and it's really cheap. I literally use Skillshare probably once a week just to learn something new. Uh, I love browsing around and looking for new things to learn. The classes are really well produced, the instructors are really knowledgeable, and honestly, for less than nine bucks a month, it's a really freaking good deal. And the great news is that because you guys are my viewers, you're gonna get two months of the service for free. Head to the link in the description below. Uh, just by clicking the link, you'll get the two free months and you can check it out and you can support the channel by doing that. Today's video will carry a spoiler rating of red with spoilers all the way through a memory of light. If you have not finished the series, I don't know why you're watching this. Watch this video at your own risk. You have been warned. So we're going to be taking a look at five stories from the Wheel of Time series that I believe would make the best standalone spin-off series. Now, a couple things I considered when making this list. First of all, is there enough content that it could run for multiple seasons? For the studio to put the financial resources that would be necessary into the project, they would want it to run for multiple years, so it would likely not be a one-off season. Secondly, is there enough story there that would make the show dramatic, that would be interesting to viewers, while still being connected enough to the source material that viewers of the original show would be interested? And lastly, does the story have enough open-ended content for the showrunners to have creative freedom and not be boxed in with outcomes. In other words, if something's set in the past of the Wheel of Time world, and we already know what's going to happen, is there enough leeway in that story that they can still make it compelling and give it some drama? This has been done well before. For instance, the best of the prequel trilogy of the Star Wars movies was Revenge of the Sith, and we knew that it would end with Anakin turning into Darth Vader. Uh, it's the process that we wanted to see there. And so with those things being said, I've picked out five that I think could be adapted. I'll tell you how I think these stories could play out and why I chose them for my list. But before we get into that, let's hit a couple honorable mentions. My first honorable mention would be the story of the rise of Ardor Hawkwing. Hawkwing was the king of a small country for its time and eventually carved out an empire that spanned the entire continent of the Westlands. These events take place roughly a thousand years before the start of the story and involve characters that we know, like Hawkwing himself and even Ishamael, as well as the beginnings of the country of Andor and Guerra Malasan, the false dragon. I could imagine this playing out somewhat like the HBO show Rome, for those of you that saw that, kind of a political thriller with wars on a massive scale. My second honorable mention would be the Trolloc Wars, set roughly another a thousand years before Hawkwing. The world had recovered to an extent from the breaking uh, of the world, and the New Order had been established with the Pact of the Ten Nations, and nations such as Arid Hall, Manetherin were ruling. This was all shattered as hordes of Trollocs, uh, led by Ishamael himself, came spewing out of the blight. Most of the Westlands was overrun, and eventually the Shadowspawn were turned back, but after great losses and basically the destruction of all of the Ten Kingdoms, this would be a war-filled epic, but with locations that are relevant to the original story, like Manetherin and Eridhal, which became Shadar Logoth, and Tarvalin in its first thousand years of existence. It's been implied that civilization was significantly more advanced at this time, and the Trolloc Wars essentially served as like, sort of like the, uh, the our world version of the burning of the Great Library of Alexandria, where tons and tons of information was lost, and it set back civilization. This is just another step in the decline of the civilization that leads up to the main story of the Wheel of Time. The third honorable mention is one that I'll mention here only because Robert Jordan had made it known that he had meant to write an Outrigger novel from the Wheel of Time universe about this. And that of course is what Matt and Tuon did 
after the last battle in returning to Shan Chan and trying to recapture uh, the land of Shan Chan. There were really no details given, and this isn't something that I would personally be that interested in seeing, but I do think it's worth mentioning as Robert Jordan's had said that he planned to write that. This concept could potentially be adapted into a television show. My last honorable mention would be the fall of Malkir. This is set roughly 50 years prior to the start of the story, and it's the tragedy of the fall of one of the great kingdoms of the Borderlands. It's actually a very compelling story about betrayal, evil, heroes and honor. If it could be made into a longer series, I think this would be more plausible, but I think just based on the story alone, it would only be limited to one season, and that's why I have it as an honorable mention. So with my honorable mentions out of the way, let's get to my list of five possibilities for the Wheel of Time spinoffs. These are listed in no particular order, but at the very end, I will let you know which ones I think are the most likely to actually be adapted. So my first choice for the Wheel of Time spinoffs television show would be a show based around the Age of Legends and its fall, eventually culminating in the War of Power. So let me give a brief history here as a recap. The world was essentially a paradise as channeling and technology had eliminated hunger and sickness and the world was at peace. Around a hundred years prior to the breaking of the world, the boar was drilled into the Dark One's prison and it began a slow decline of society as the Dark One touched the world. This ended in a climactic struggle between the forces of the Shadow and that of the Light, and it ended with the temporary seal in the Dark One's prison, and the madness of all of the male Aes Sedai in the breaking of the world. If you want a really detailed history of the Age of Legends, check out my Age of Legends videos. I made two of them. Uh, one was about life during the Age of Legends, and then the last one was sort of like the timeline of its fall. I'll have both of those videos linked in the description. But here's why I'd love to see this series. For one, I've always been personally fascinated by the Age of Legends. I love the technology and the uses for channeling that they had. I feel like there are themes that can be explored in the idea of corruption uh, in the gradual fall of society. I think there is a precedent for this type of story as well. I think shows like Fear the Walking Dead and really any other zombie show, uh, show the gradual decline of society, I feel like those are really popular. Uh, another more popular example of this would be the Star Wars prequel trilogy again. I hate to keep bringing that up, but despite your opinions of its execution, there was certainly an audience that wanted to see what things were like before the Empire. And I think that was kind of one of those compelling things about that trilogy. So I think there's potential for a lot of content here. Yes, the fall of the Age of Legends takes place over a hundred year time period, but many of the characters are Aes Sedai who live longer than that. So the seasons could be set in different time periods. For example, the first season could follow events that led to the drilling of the boar and its immediate aftermath. The second season could see the formation of the armies of the shadow and lead up to the war in the final season of the series being the war of power itself and ending with the sealing of the dark one's prison if they wanted to add more seasons either before the sealing of the boar or they wanted to show what came after there would be plenty of room to grow there we could actually see the aiel being sent off with the items of power that we see in the way back to Angriel and roideon in terms of there being dramatic elements that would be interesting to viewers there's quite a bit here as well uh, there's the dynamic between luz theron and mirin who would later turn into Lanfear. Luce Theron's rise to power could be explored, and his relationships with the other characters in the series, including the Forsaken, would be really interesting to see. There's potential for a whole lot of Easter eggs to the Aiel and the Green Man, and we could learn more about how the boar was actually sealed. These are things that would be there for fans of the original series, but they could be expanded on and be really interesting, I think, uh, to really anybody that watched it. This series would start in a happy place, and even though the light wins, it would end in total destruction, so even in victory. But I think that's something the viewers would like to see. This also leaves the showrunners for this hypothetical show room to add content and be creative. Yes, the main plot is somewhat established, but there's so much leeway in how that could be executed, in some interesting places to take the story, like watching the Forsaken become the Forsaken and do Forsaken-y things. Uh, I'd just be really super interested in watching that show. So the next spinoff I think that would be great to see uh, would be a post-Last Battle world set, let's say, around 50 years after the events of the Last Battle. The world would still be recovering from the devastation that the Last Battle brought, and the Dragon's Peace is becoming tenuous. Uh, conflicts are happening with the Shan Chan, and there are still Dark Friends in the world that have created a new cult set on reopening the Dark One's prison. The Sharans and Shido are threats, uh, as they are not really subject to the Dragon's Peace. There's really just unlimited content that I think they could create here. This would be a blank slate, essentially, that they could create as they chose to, yet still within the world that we already know. There are plenty of threats in the world left, and it would be extremely interesting to see how everything all plays out after the last battle and the beginnings of a new age. This could play out very similarly to the HBO series Watchmen, which takes place 30 years or so after the comic book ended. Uh, it was masterfully done, the show was, and it took the story in a completely different direction, 
while still be giving us features from the comic book or the movie, if you want to think of it that way. What's also great about this is that many of the characters that we know would still be alive to make cameos. I would have completely new main characters. I wouldn't make any of the old ones the main characters, but there's a lot of characters that are likely to still be alive based on their age, and Rand would probably still be roaming the world as well. There is just potential for a lot of interesting content there. In a hypothetical plotline, uh, I think the show could be based around tensions building between the Shan Chan and the other nations of the Westlands which are not as united as they used to be. There's still prejudice against male channelers, and there's tensions between the White and Black Tower when they should be united. And underpinning all of this is the emergence of a cult dedicated to the Dark One in the reopening of the Dark One's prison, with the goal of currying favor for being the ones to actually reopen it. Keep in mind, there are still three Forsaken alive, and many of the Black Aja exist as well. Yes, Masana and Gr Grendel are essentially mentally gone, uh, and Mogideon is a prisoner of the Shan Chan, but nevertheless, they still exist. Mogideon would actually be a perfect leader for this movement or this cult, as she kind of likes to play from things behind the shadow. And so there could be plot lines basically rescuing her from the Shan Chan and reestablishing that cult. Again, I think there's a lot of content. Uh, that's just something I came up with off the top of my head, but that would be very interesting. So this spinoff is one that I've not really seen talked about a whole lot, but I think would be pretty compelling. Uh, and that would be a series set in the time at the end of the breaking of the world. So let me set the scene. The breaking is coming to an end, uh, but all the people are scattered. The Ogier are still trying to find steading. The Aiel are wandering with the artifacts given to them by the Aes Sedai. Shadowspawn still exists. And the remnants of the once great society of the Age of Legends are everywhere, but everything has been lost. The White Tower hasn't been founded yet, but there are many factions of female channelers vying for control which is actually part of the founding of the White Tower story. But say some of the Ogier have found studying and they're still sheltering some of the last male Aes Sedai who have given them the ways, which at this point are not corrupted. And they've also given them the talisman of growing to grow more. We could follow brand new characters within this world as they found the institutions and lay the framework for society that we'll see later in the main series. There's essentially unlimited content here with the right creativity. And I add that asterisk there. Very little is known about this time in the history of the books. And so they would pretty much have a blank slate to work with. And there's something very appealing to me about learning to survive in a post-apocalyptic world and watching humanity rebuild. I think the only thing that we're lacking here would be characters that can kind of serve as a bridge between the two times. Um, but with good writing, I think that that could be helped out. As there are a number of events from the way back to Rangrial and the Shadow Rising that we could potentially see played out during this time period. For instance, one of our main characters could be the Aiel that left the Way of the Leaf. There's potential for multiple plots here, and again, if they can get somebody really creative to write this, I think it could work. So I know this one's a bit out there, but let me explain. We know that there are seven ages in the wheel, and we really only know of the events of one of those, really and bits and pieces from two more. There are quite a few things that are hinted at throughout the series that imply that there was so much more lore and world building in the history and the future of the Wheel of Time universe. For instance, we have the origins of the Portal Stones, abilities like Wolf Brothers and Men's Reading of the Pattern, which are said to be things from long past that are coming back. The snakes and foxes and the origins of their connection between our world and theirs. The coming of the Ogier to our world. There are all kinds of stories that could exist in the other ages of the wheel that could be explored in a new show. Again, there's a total blank slate uh, for a really talented writing team to come in and add to the lore of the Wheel of Time universe. By sitting at the opposite end of the wheel, we can hear stories of the events of the main timeline as legends and myths, sort of like the stories from the first and second ages were shown as myths and legends in the main sequence. There are possibilities to explore with similar themes from the Wheel of Time while adding characters to follow and letting us see some of the heroes of the horn in different times, for instance, maybe even including Rand uh, being reborn. Yes, I know this is a stretch because there's literally almost no material to go on for this, but I think it could be compelling if written well and the original show is a major success. So the last spinoff series I'd like to see is the events before and after the Aiel War. The Aiel War takes place roughly 20 years before the start of the main storyline, and the aftermath of that war includes the events of the New Spring novel. It's a quick history recap. Around 500 years prior to the start of the story, the Aiel gifted a sapling of the, of the Chor tree to the Kyrian and people, and thanks for giving them water and helping the Aiel in the distant past. They were also given exclusive rights to trade with the Aiel and across the Aiel Waste with the Sharans for their silks and other really 
rare stuff. This resulted in incredible wealth flowing into Kyrian and the building of the topless towers within the city. So fast forward about 400 years. King Laman Damadred, the king of Kyrian at the time, inexplicably cuts down the Chora tree sapling to build an extravagant throne for himself and what later became known as Laman's Pride. As it was a major insult to the honor of the Aiel, four of the 12 clans poured over the dragon wall to kill Laman as punishment. This resulted in the nations of the Westlands banding together in a continent-wide war against the invading Aiel. The war ended outside the walls of Tarvalin after the Aiel killed Laman. Now they weren't defeated, but rather they just accomplished what they were there for and left. Also at this time, Randolph Thor was born to a dying maiden on the slopes of Dragon Mount and found by Tamal Thor, who fought for the Ilion or Companions. There is just so much action here that could be covered over multiple seasons. From Tam's entry into the army of Ilion to the politics of the White Tower and a young Moraine and Swan Sanche, and the disappearance of both the Prince of Andor, Luke, and the daughter heir of Andor, who would later become an Aiel maiden and give birth to Randall Thor. What I love about this is we get to see characters that we know long before they were who they were in the main series, as well as giving the showrunners room for some drama and intrigue to fill in the gaps of how these events all played out. There are literally so many characters that we could follow in this timeline. Moraine and Swan, uh, as I mentioned, Tam, Carrie Althor, Elida, Cadswain, Lan, Morgase, Ruark, Pedro Nile, Amis, and then there's a whole lot of other historical figures from the series. Now, it would be really new and yet have a connection to the main storyline that would be really compelling in my opinion. So those are five I'd love to see. Quickly before we end the video, I guess I'll let you know which of these I think is actually likely to get made. I'll start with the one I'd most like to see, but I think is the least likely to get made, and that is the spinoff series about the Age of Legends. I've always been fascinated by the Age of Legends, like I said before. This would be extremely interesting to me. The reason I don't think that this gets made is it's such a tonal shift from like a renaissance era magic fantasy show to a series based on the age of legends which would be largely science fiction or at least it would feel that way it's very futuristic with flying cars and electricity and just totally different feel i just feel like that would be such a difference from the original series that it probably wouldn't get made for that reason i think the show that is the most likely to actually get made would be a spin-off surrounding the aiel war it has enough of the main characters that it will draw in old viewers while at the same time exploring a new story and new plots it's also set in mostly the same world at the same time, roughly, and so they wouldn't need to build brand new sets. They could reuse some of them. But let me know what Wheel of Time spinoff series you would like to see if any of them ever get made. Uh, let me know in the comments below and make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel to be updated when I release new Wheel of Time content. Also check out the Patreon to support what I do here on the channel. Thank you so much to all of you who already support me. It means a ton to me. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do My mistress up above, slipping on a rope of blue She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?